Hello to SAP Tech at 2020. My name is Boris. I work as a product manager for the software update manager and on system conversion topics. Let's have a look at the agenda for this session today. We have three sections. We start with the requirements for a system conversion, especially the prerequisites for the source system. We will have a look on the preparation steps and the tools supporting you in this phase. And we will have a look at the things that are happening in the technical execution of the system conversion. So as a kind of repetition, there are different ways to reach SAP S4 HANA as a new product family. And um, there is the system conversion, sometimes referred to as the brownfield approach. That's the topic for today's session. A system conversion is a one-to-one -one conversion of one ERP source system into one SAP S4 HANA system. The other transition approaches are like the selective data transition that uh, support other scenarios as well, like merging several systems, several source ERP system into one SAP S4 HANA target system. The third scenario is the new implementation, sometimes referred to as the greenfield approach. These are the three approaches and they are largely uh, discussed in our introduction session DT100. So again, we will focus on the system conversion that is targeting SAP S4 HANA, the on-premise edition only. And it is always a one-to-one -one relationship. We will have a short look on the S4 HANA family, so to say. Well, on this slide, you see on the left hand side the source system. It's an ERP system, so we always convert an ERP source system. And on the right hand side, you see the S4 HANA uh, editions. The S4 HANA cloud edition up above is not in focus because for a system conversion, we always focus and target the S4 HANA on premise edition. In the middle, you see the very first members of the S4HANA family, like SAP S4HANA Finance 1605 and Simple Finance 1503. You know, these numbers refer to the month and year when they were uh, introduced. Not, those are not a valid target release nowadays. So on the right hand side of the slide, you see SAP S4HANA, the latest valid target releases are 1809, 1909, and especially 2020. Well, some of these numbers are striking through because they are no longer a valid target release. And so let's have a short look on the release strategy of SAP S4 HANA. We come out with something we call the initial stack, support package stack zero. And then we have two feature package stacks, after that, the release like 9 to 9 will be in maintenance mode. That is, we will have in future support package stacks. That is the S4HANA family. Um, for the system conversion as such, just to repeat, we have one source system. It's an ERP system and it's converted into one SAP S4HANA target system. The requirements for the source system are simply it has to be ERP 6.0 with or without enhancement package. It can run on any of the supported database types. So we've uh, listed this, it can run on any database. It may even run on a HANA database as well, but this is not a requirement. In here, you see the target SAP S4 HANA 2020 runs on SAP HANA 2.0. Which requirements do we have uh, for the source system? Well, the source system has to be a Unicode system. Non-Unicode systems do not allow a direct one-step conversion. Second point is the source system has to be an ABAP single stack. You know, it's possible to run an, even an ERP system as a dual stack together with a Java component. So Java and ABAP on the same database with the same ID, but this is not required. Th that is not supported. So that would require a dual stack split beforehand. Third, bullet point here again it's not required to first migrate your erp system onto the hana database the one step conversion can start from a non hana database for the illustrated um, 
system here, you see the requirements uh, are listed in the SAP note. For the target, SAP S4HANA 2020, you have to know that it's based on ABAP platform 2020. So in general, S4HANA is no longer based on SAP NetWeaver. That's the uh, previous world of SAP Business Suite. It's based on ABAP platform. Since ABAP platform 1809, we have a different coverage of supported operating systems for the application server. So that's something you will have to consider um, in your world. That's why we reference here an SAP node uh, listing uh, which operating systems are supported with which SAP S4HANA target release. So there is, um, there is an overview about the preparation phase with different checks and tools that support you and the realization phase. Well, we start with the system requirements that we have already discussed. I told you an ERP 6.0 system with any enhancement package is fine. But actually, concerning the customizing of the system, there are more requirements that we will have a look at. You see that we have the maintenance planner, uh, the usual tool for planning a transaction, an update or upgrade, even in the classical business suite world, is the tool for planning a conversion as well, as we will see. We have the so-called simplification item checks. Well, I will have to explain what the simplification item is. That will come in a minute. And we have the area of custom code preparation. So obviously, you have to consider to check your custom code, whether it can still run on the target SAP S4HANA system. All this um, is uh, supported by cross-application and application-specific preparation steps. And we have an important point there that is called the simplification list. Again, I will have to explain what a simplification item is in SAP S4HANA. And then in the realization phase, as we will discuss later, we have the software update manager that is the kind of engine to drive the technical execution of the system conversion and some application specific uh, follow up activities. That's the kind of overview illustration there that we will see uh, in one of the or the other on the following slides. So simplification item and simplification item list is an important thing. Well, SAP S4HANA is a new product version. It's not a successor of ERP and that's important to note and things have changed. There are new functionalities, there are deprecated functions compared to ERP, and all that that has changed and improved is written down in what we call the simplification item list. Each simplification item explains a functionality that has changed, that was replaced or removed, or new functionality compared to the source system ERP 6.0. So the simplification item list is the complete list of all those things that have changed and especially listing the impact on your project, things to be considered in the ERP source system. That's important. And the simplification item list is an important list, not only for you to study, to be prepared, but also for the tools that are checking your source system. These checks are based on this simplification item list with all those requirements in there. There are some requirements that have to be fulfilled in the ERP source system already. That means there may be effort for you to adapt your source system. Well, actually, this simplification list is a long list, but uh, don't get scared. There are possibilities to shrink down this list to what is especially important for you, for your project, for your ERP source system. You see listed here, there are currently around 650 simplification items, but for a project, typically only a part of them is really relevant and later I will explain how you can drill down, can shrink down the list to what is relevant for you. Um, the simplification list as such is available. There are different ways to access it. Where you see a launch pad URL here, that is the simplification item catalog. So listing and uh, offering the possibility to filter the list. The other uh, opportunity to check this list is a PDF. PDF where all those items are listed and explained. 
important to mention that there are some important blogs in the community explaining the usage of this list. But I think i rather uh, show you this list now in a short demonstration. So let's have a short look on the simplification item list. As an entry point, we use help.sap.com slash s4hana. This will direct us directly to the latest S4HANA product version. In here, we use the section implement because for us it is about the conversion and you see directly the simplification item catalog as well as the simplification item list shown. We start with the catalog as such. And we choose the target 1909. And we get a browser page on which we can filter. We see a long list of items. Let us search for business partner approach. This topic shows one item with a title, business area, and each simplification item is referenced to an SAP node. The details will show more rather technical information. You can have a look here. Tables are even listed that are associated to this item. Let us now return to the help page and have a look on the simplification item list, which is a PDF. I will open this directly in Firefox. It's a long list. You cannot filter, but of course you can search. And it's the complete list. Don't get overwhelmed by all those pages. Not all of these items are relevant for your project. Again, we search for business partner approach. And when we will see that this contains more explanatory text that is helpful for you. So far on the simplification item list demonstration. Okay, so the simplification list is an important point of information for the things that have changed. Now there are several tools to check your source system and one of the um, uh, Agenda point is here to give an overview on those uh, tools that are available for checking and maybe adapting your source system. Uh, a very important tool uh, that uh, recommended to be used in an early stage of your project is the SAP readiness check for SAP S4HANA. This is um, recommended to be used in an early stage. Even if you, uh, as a customer, do not yet have an S4HANA license, you can use this tool and it will provide a very comprehensive overview on all the aspects that are to be considered. Actually, the readiness check is a kind of umbrella uh, covering other tools as well that we will have a look at on the following slides. And uh, so it's an important uh, starting point um, uh, to consider. It uh, covers checks in your source system and um, the, uh, it's a kind of holistic analysis of your system and is an important truth of information, point of information for the project planning to know which areas to focus on and to spend time in the pro project preparation. Um, the most important aspects are covered and uh, in the sequence of this presentation, we will have a look how the um, readiness check covers checks that other tools are executing as well. Um, in the tech ed, we have a dedicated session for this, the DT114, that you should consider. Uh, on the lower part of the screen, you see that there is a link to the help portal and an SAP node explaining how to implement the required checks in your source system and how to use the readiness check. But again, I think it's a good idea uh, to show uh, the readiness check in a short demonstration. Let us have a short look on the SAP readiness check for S4HANA now. We start with the launchpad. 
On this launchpad, you can configure to have the direct access to the SAP readiness check. And the entry page shows that there are already analysis for me. You can start a new analysis. And if you scroll down, you see a good explanation of the overall process. And especially the relevant SAP node is listed here that explains how to configure your ERP system and run the check for which you can then upload the files. I've already created an analysis here. Let us have a short look on this. You see there are a couple of Fury uh, apps listed, simplification items, activities related to those items, add-on compatibility, business functions, sizing, custom code analysis, and much more. The big benefit is that you get the overview, especially on simplification items that are relevant for your speci specific project, for your system. You can drill down in all those uh, areas like add-on compatibility to see details, to get more understanding, in this case, which add-ons are relevant. You can return to the overview page to have a look on the simplification items for different areas and in a lot of areas you can even add uh, some comments to give a status in your project. So the readiness check is an important early check that covers a lot of checks that are discussed in our session. We've seen that the readiness check covers a lot of um, information and covers checks as well. Checks from other tools that are to be used in the project. One example is the maintenance planner for a system conversion. I guess you know it's uh, since a while already a successor for the famous maintenance optimizer. It's a tool to plan updates, upgrades, migrations, and especially system conversions. It's a cloud-based offering, so you see the URL to access the maintenance planner. And meanwhile, we have a new UI there for the maintenance planner. There are tiles, and for us, the tile plan for SAP S4HANA is the relevant one. Well, actually, using the maintenance planner has two different aspects. The preparation for the conversion means we check the source system, whether it's fine to be converted. And if it is fine, we can proceed and actually plan the conversion. That means we can uh, gain the software archives if the s license is already existing. Concerning checking the source system, the maintenance planner is checking whether the existing add-ons installed in the system and the activated business functions are fine for the s target system. For this check of the source system, it's not required that you already have the s license, so you can run this check very early. Ex um, especially this check is the same check that the readiness check is executing. So checking whether the add-ons and the business functions are fine. If the check is green and if the s license is already there, then you can proceed and do the planning. That means the maintenance planner will calculate and provide the required software archives and what we call the stack XML. So the recipe for the software update manager later to execute the technical conversion. In this planning, the uh, maintenance planner will consider the backend software for the S4HANA backend server, as well as the front end server for the Fury software. Both are considered. It's important to emphasize again that the checks for add-ons is a very important one. You can imagine there may be add-ons from SAP installed in the system. There may be add-ons from third-party vendors, and it's important to check this very early. For the SAP add-ons, the maintenance planner knows exactly whether there's already a version supported for S4HANA. For the third-party add-ons, you may have to check this on your own and contact the vendor. 
The planning as such is pretty easy. We have a sequence of screenshots here. So you um, use this tile plan for S4HANA, then you choose to convert your system. You will have to specify the name of your source system. Um, ERP 6.0 single stack is the requirement. You will provide the target release of S4HANA and the stack. And finally, you will also consider the front end server software um, for uh, Fury as well. And there are different deployment options. Nowadays, we recommend to have a co deployment with the back end server as a general statement. Uh, if you would like to learn more, especially on the new features of the maintenance planner, then we recommend to use the uh, DT108. Now, I told you about the simplification item list. And now, um, as promised, I will show you the check on simplification items that is capable to drill down the complete list of items for those that are relevant for your system. Actually, that's what we call the simplification item checks. Those checks um, are to be implemented in your ERP source system. Um, it's a kind of bundled number of SAP nodes. Actually, we ship this as transport-based correction instruction, TCI, and they have to be applied in your source system. So your source system can be checked on customizing level, for example, as well. It's very important to um, consider this check very early. And this is one of those checks that is executed by the readiness check as well. And um, the checks um, will may give you a result uh, where there are things to be adapted and you have to do this before you start the software update manager. Because the software update manager later will start exactly the same check and if there are still open issues not solved, the software update manager will stop the technical conversion and will not allow to convert the system. Actually, um, in this little screenshot, you see there are two aspects in the simplification item checks, the relevance check and the consistency check. Uh, the difference is uh, pretty easy. The relevance check says, well, there are um, components in your system that have to be checked. And if there is a check um, that is related to a component not installed in a system, then this check is obviously not relevant. More important for those checks that are relevant is the consistency, if uh, this item is consistent. And one of those examples is, again, the business partner approach that has to be implemented in the source ERP system already. Um, otherwise, uh, the conversion is not possible. So that is one of the examples where there is a simplification item check, considering whether you have implemented the business partner approach or we call this customer vendor integration as well. So the simplification item check executed in your source system drills down the complete list of items to those that are to be adapted in your source system. And again, the same check is executed by the maintenance planner, sorry, by the readiness check as well. Now, how about custom code? As already mentioned, custom code, you have your own coding and uh, you have to check whether this will run on SAP S4HANA. Actually, there are different phases of those checks. You will check your coding as such before you execute the conversion of your development system. The adaptation of your custom code to the new data model of S4HANA as described in simplification items as well. Those adaptations can only happen after the conversion of your development system. You can imagine only after the conversion, we do have the new data model, the new objects available, so you can adapt your code. But even more important to consider is that you have to check whether you need your coding at all. So that's why the scoping part is a very important area. You have to use uh, tools like SCMON or the new SUSG tool to analyze which of your coding is used at all. You can imagine it does not make sense to adapt your coding which is not used. So we can reduce a lot of effort by simply analyzing and getting rid of those codes. That is the code paths that are not uh, relevant, they are not used. Um, and you should consider that uh, SAP S4HANA has new features, new functionalities. So you may 
uh, replace your custom code by those functionalities as well. There, are, uh, there is an SAP Fiori app that supports you in this scoping process and you can even create a transport request for the software update manager so that the tool will um, not take your code to the new world to SAP S4HANA. The actual checks um, are then remote checks with the ABAP test cockpit that can be executed in an ABAP test cockpit system or with a new Fiori app that is out there for quite a while. Again, we analyze the system before we do the conversion. Only after the conversion of the development system, it's possible to adapt the coding. And this is done with the ABAP development tools from Eclipse uh, plugin. And there is even support for some what we call quick fixes, semi automated, um, to adapt uh, the same hits uh, several times. So this can reduce the amount of effort to adapt your coding as well. And as always, it's recommended to consider performance tuning listed here. You will learn much more in the session DT104, as this can only be a very short overview on those aspects to consider for custom code. Finally, a tool that is rather new or a check from the software update manager is what we call the prerequisite check extended. It's available now since SP8 of the software update manager. Again, the process is the maintenance planner provides the stack XML. And you can imagine if you run your first conversion run on a sandbox, you may run into an issue that you have to solve. For example, database version not sufficient. You have to solve this and then the next issue comes up and it takes time to solve this issue. Once it's solved, you can continue the run and another issue may come up, for example, as part of the simplification items. So you do not know exactly how many issues are coming up. Instead, now you can consider the prerequisite check extended. It's an option in the UI of the software update manager, as you can see. And the benefit is you start this check and it will detect the same issues and will write those issues into a list. You do not have to solve this. You can continue the run, find the next issue, put it to the list so that you do not stop each time. You get a complete list of all those issues. You can work on this list afterwards in parallel. This check does not allow you to enter the downtime. It's just collecting all those checks and the tool is then doing a reset. An important um, tool here or um, option in the software update manager to get the overview on those issues to work on, um, especially to work on those parallel. Um, well, we had a lot of checks now. Let's have a short overview. You see this illustration of the ECC source system with different areas, business data up above on database level. What we have seen is the simplification item checks are narrowing down the checks that are considering your business data, the customizing of your system. We have seen the maintenance planner that is more focusing on the component level. So components of the system, especially add-ons in the system and business functions. Then there is the operating system and the software update manager has a prerequisite check. I did not mention this yet uh, because we have a prerequisite check extended as well. Not to forget the custom code, so the Z objects that are uh, considered by the custom code checks and the custom code adaptation. Then we have some checks that are kind of umbrella. We have seen the readiness check that is taking over a lot of checks listed here. So the readiness check is considering the simplification item checks, custom code checks, even maintenance planner checks. And I've introduced the software update manager prerequisite check extended that has a kind of overlap with the readiness check, but can detect more technical issues in the source system uh, compared to the readiness check. So we compare, we um, expect you to run both checks. That is the overview on those checks. Now, concerning the execution, the technical execution, especially for the software update manager, this tool has the task to update the software, to implement the new components especially, and to trigger the data conversion. So the move from the old tables to the new table of the new S4HANA data model. So this data conversion, taking the table content, moving it to the new tables is part
partially executed by the tool. You see a simple architecture picture for the case that the source system is already on SAP S4HANA, which is not a requirement as I mentioned. So um, for the case number two here, source is not yet on HANA, the software update manager will execute the database migration we call this DMO. And so the architecture picture contains a source database type and the target database, which is the HANA host there. It's worth mentioning that this conversion process is an in-place procedure from the perspective of the application server. This remains, but nevertheless, there is an option for the migration case to even move the application server. We call this DMO with system move. So this allows you to convert and to transfer the complete system into a different data center or even to a hyperscaler. What are the prerequisites before you can start the software update manager? Well, you can imagine the maintenance planner has to run. You have to have uh, the software archives and the stack XML, which is the recipe uh, for the software update manager to run. And you have to uh, consider the simplification item checks because the software update manager will execute the same checks. And if there are open items, it will stop. Other activities that are optional are, for example, the readiness check. We strongly recommend that you use the readiness check because it's a good starting point for your project to see all those aspects to consider. But the software update manager will not check whether you have run this check. Custom code check as well. You may, for a sandbox run, uh, ignore the checking of your custom code because the, the software update manager as such uh, does not care about the custom code. Anyhow, you can only adapt your custom code on the development system after you have converted the development system to SAP S4HANA. Finally, those prerequisite checks by the software update manager, either the existing one or the new one prerequisite check extended are optional, um, are recommended, but are not uh, um, um, required before you start the actual conversion run with the software update manager. Details on those prerequisite checks can be found in the documentation guide to be found on this support portal page. Well, what are the technical steps of the conversion? There's a uptime processing of the tool where it will create the usual shadow repository. Then we have downtime, so ramp down and downtime. In the downtime, the software update manager will execute the migration if required, if source is not yet on HANA. The tool will execute the software update to have the new components and will at least partially trigger the data conversion. Actually, data conversion, moving data table content from old to new data tables is partially executed by the software update manager and is partially a post activity that has to be executed by IMG activities. First, after the software update manager has converted this system to S4HANA, there is a FIN customizing, then you would trigger the FIN data migration and some post activities. Concerning the downtime, it's always important to be very specific what you consider as downtime. The technical downtime is the execution time of the software update manager, as well as those fin data conversion, because the system cannot be used by the end users. Nevertheless, be specific if you are talking about technical or business downtime when you talk with colleagues. Business downtime is the overall downtime, including ramp down and ramp up. Then there are some aspects for project planning. Well, you will have to start with a sandbox. You will reiterate sandbox conversion runs there to get familiar with the procedure and uh, iterate there to refine your project plan. We have then the development system, Q&A system, and the productive system. For the development system, once you have converted the development system, you can adapt your custom code and you will create transport requests with these adaptations to be used in the subsequent conversion runs of QA and productive system. You will have to consider dual maintenance to have one development system for your existing ERP source system, for example, for hotfixes and another converted development system for developments on SAP S4HANA. 
The Q&A um, will serve to do business function testing on the new and adapted processes coming with SAP S4HANA. And then finally, for the productive system, you will consider a dress rehearsal as usual. For all this, you will have to consider the timeline. You have to take uh, into considerations that the software update manager is available and in a phase we call in maintenance for four months. So you may start with software update manager, for example, nine on the development system and consider a switch to a later version for Q&A and productive system, because after four months, an SP version of the software update manager will be out of maintenance and you do not want to run um, a software version of the sum that is out of maintenance and it's for your productive system. So um, consider this in your project planning. And this is what we call the maintenance strategy of the software update manager. You will find this attached to the respective uh, node for the overall software logistics tool set. To summarize this aspects to consider, you need time, you need knowledge and consider testing. Consider time. You need time to get an overview on the required simplification items um, and to clear them up. You need workshops and user trainings, especially if you have new Fiori user interfaces. T time you need for checking add-ons from third-party vendors and to uh, consider deprecation of custom code. You have to gain knowledge. You need to start this project from the very beginning as a joint project from the technical side and the application area. That's important. And you need colleagues experience with finance and controlling. It's not only a technical conversion. It's the move to a new uh, product family. So that's why it has to be a joint project. Finally, testing, we recommend up to three test conversions on a sandbox to really uh, get familiar and uh, to refine your project plan there. You have to test the new roles and authorization changes. And of course, you will plan for dress rehearsals. That was the overview on the system conversion. Uh, we have uh, several other sessions at TechEd on the system conversion topic that you should consider. And of course, the journey is not over. There are lots of offerings at SAP TechEd this year as well. So thank you very much for listening um, and hope I hope you enjoy SAP TechEd 2020. <laughs>